For the last 10 years, we've had copious amounts of superhero films. That means a lot for you idiots out there. And I've talked about them at length. Now I want to step back, take a look at some of those films that didn't work, the ones that missed the mark entirely. Films that are so bad they could be considered hate crimes and probably should be. Films so terrible they should be buried in the middle of the desert with the copies of E.T. You are, of course, referring to the abominations Daredevil and Ghost Rider. Feel free to jump in at any time, Marlene. Thanks. Was I supposed to raise my hand first, or what are we even debating here? It's really clear that Ghost Rider is the worst of the two. It's really a shit to shit comparison to me, but I like to bitch, so let's feud. People were eating each other's pets when they found out that Ben Affleck was going to be the new Batman. And for good reason, after the piss poor job he did as Daredevil slash Matt Murdock. I wouldn't say the script gave him a lot to work with. Cage, on the other hand, is in full on Cage mode, camping up every scene he's in as Johnny Blaze. He also seemed too old for the part. Uh, then again, I know nothing of either of these comic books since I had a life when I was a child. You were in your room crying alone. So what other terrible things does Daredevil give us? Well, there's Jennifer Garner as Elektra. She's not bad, but she's also not great. And I think the biggest detractor comes in the form of a spin-off called Elektra. Unlike Ghost Rider, Daredevil has some memorable characters that actually work. Colin Farrell's Bullseye, for example, was a blast to watch. And the late Michael Clark Duncan was the perfect kingpin, a ruthless, power-hungry boss that just happened to be the size of a tank. Yeah, a tank that can be taken out by a couple taps to the legs. What a wasted villain. I will, however, give you Colin Farrell as Bullseye. His performance was spot on. Please don't do that. His Irish persona was very accurate. Still going. I'm not a male cow, but I would certainly give up my left Bullseye to see that performance again. Really stretching it now. The Ghost Rider gives us Sam Elliott as the caretaker and Eva Mendes as breasts. Those two reasons alone trounce any of the actors in Daredevil. I mean, the two reasons are her breasts. That wasn't obvious. She's terrible. I, I mean, look, normally I like Eva, but her delivery was just really bad. That's how everyone is. They all sound like they're reading their lines off at gunpoint. We talked about the great villains in Daredevil. What does Ghost Rider give us? Blackheart and his three elemental spirit henchmen are barely in the film, and when they do show up, they're cornier than Nicolas Cage in it. Cornfield, yes. Very nice. Hell's Kitchen is not only a successful Gordon Ramsay TV series on Fox, please pay me, but it's also the slums of New York City, where shit goes down. That's where we meet our protagonist, a young Mad Murdock. Matt's been dealt a pretty raw hand, blinded by chemicals that take away his vision and also his ability to act. The good news is he now possesses the power to hear well. Seriously, this is the best we had, DC. I'm sure Daredevil has been around since the beginning of time, but Ghost Rider is just a much cooler character. I can walk between both worlds. I am the Ghost Rider. That was my cage. And nobody can do cage but cage, I'm sorry. Much like Daredevil, he's not really afraid of anything, but the difference is... Oh, I don't know, he has the face of a f***ing flaming skull? He's also not the sharpest superhero. When has making a deal with the devil ever worked out in someone's favor? Never. That's one. These are both very simple, straightforward stories of love and revenge. Blaze wants to win back his soul, and Daredevil wants to take down the Kingpin. These are also both directed by Mark Steven Johnson, along with that wonderful spin-off you mentioned, Elektra. I'm sure Daredevil won't mind if I turn a blind eye to the rest of the details and move right on to action and effects. I suppose it was inevitable that you would do blind jokes. And much like Matt Murdock, I see nothing wrong with that. I'm Ghost Rider. Holy hell, where to even start? Director Mark Stevenson has no idea how to film action. It's like the blind leading the blind. Is there a pun, counter, I'm not seeing, or what? There actually should be. Keegan, put up the pun counter. Let's, let's start it at three. I think that's fair. At least there's action in Daredevil. There's like three action scenes in Ghost Rider, and they all suck. The motorcycle scaling up the side of the building is pretty badass. I mean, it's, it's certainly nothing compared to the playground fight. What the f was that? Who thought this was a good idea? A fight on a playground? Rife with Matrix and Crouching Tiger ripoff shots and hammy one-liners. There's more ham here than Nicolas Cage in a pig pen. Yes, good. 
Not to mention how the film's shot. Sometimes it's dark and brooding, and other times it's a downright eyesore. Go back and watch the CGI in Ghost Rider, okay? Scorpion from Mortal Kombat looks more convincing. Ghost Rider was successful enough to warrant a sequel, a really terrible one, but still. In Hollywood, to not get a follow-up film means you done f***ed up. You did something very wrong. Tekken 2 just came out on DVD. Tekken 2. I'm an outlaw. I'm an outlaw. This is a win for Ghost Rider, and not because the score is good, but because Daredevils is so bad. Graham Ravel is a name I just botched. It's also the name given to the composer. Previous works include Street Fighter, Spawn, and Tank Girl. Not what I would call a stellar backlog. The hard rock and electric beats date the movie instantly. The final fight is about the only thing that works in its favor, and it's too short-lived that I think I could blink and have missed it. Unlike Matt Murdock, who can keep his eyes open and have the same effect. Not really a pun, but... It is at the expense of the blind, so let's, let's mark it. I can't wait to see the offended's comments. There's nothing particularly great about Ghost Rider's score either. I mean, it's, it's par for the course stuff with nothing that really separates itself from the pack. Spider-Man 3's composer Christopher Young is responsible for this lackluster affair, but it's possible he was just trying to keep it in line with the quality of the film. If you walked into this film with the Daredevil director's cut in your back pocket, keep it there. I don't want to hear about it. People claim that it's like a totally different film. Bullshit. It might go from an F to an F+. Plus, but it's not a game changer. It's like when people were going off about the Wolverine director's cut too. What, the director added like 10 more minutes of shitty action and blood? It doesn't make the film better, it just makes it longer and more depressing to watch. Is this a wrap up or are you just trying to alienate every last viewer at this point? I'm just trying to make them understand, Marlene. Why don't you promote something while I sit here and stew? Sure. I'm Marlene, also known as I Like Comics 2 on the web. I also have a YouTube channel called youtube.com slash I Like Comics 2. I also have a website, so if you want to see all my videos and articles together, it is I Like Comics 2.com. I'm sure the websites will be linked in the description below. I work at Tumblr, and I used to be an intern at Marvel, and I am the current editor in chief of comics.tumblr.com. I also write reviews for Newsarama, so it's very clear that I love comic books, but I also I also love video games and toys, and I like touring the US and going to video game and comic book conventions. So if any of that coverage interests you, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or join the mailing list on my website. And if you have any questions or you just want to talk geeky stuff, hit me up. New Daredevil and Ghost Rider films and TV shows are inevitable. I just hope they look back at their mistakes, learn from them. I also hope that Ben Affleck takes his job seriously like he states he has. I don't like being blinded by false promises. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Why did I agree to do this? I get that a lot. <laughs>